Hey, dude, I have some questions about OBS. What's up, man? Why do you think I can answer your questions? Aren't you like the OBS guru of YouTube or something like that? Well, I don't mean to brag, but... Well, it's 2021, and for some reason, I still can't get my OBS settings right. Um, so my friends told me to come check out you. Well, you're not alone, dude. A lot of people have some serious trouble setting up OBS. Honestly, I would really appreciate the help. I have so many questions, and for some reason, I watch all these videos and cannot get my settings right. Well, you've come to the right place. Let's get into it. What is up guys and welcome back to the Hammer Dance YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be going into the nitty gritty of setting up OBS. I've done a lot of OBS setup videos in the past, but I'm still getting a lot of questions from you guys and I understand it's a little bit tricky. If you've never done it before, setting up OBS for the first time it can be kind of overwhelming. So. I'm going to help you guys. We're going to try and keep this video under 10 minutes if possible. And I'm going to go through each individual setting and try and help you guys tweak it and get the best settings for your machine. Now, this is a little bit hard because everyone's machine is a little bit different. Um, everyone's internet is different. So this is going to be more of a generalized settings, but then you can you know, know what they mean so that you can kind of tweak them to work for your machine. But before we jump in, guys, let's give a shout out and thank you to our sponsor for today's video, Own.TV. Own.TV is the place to go, guys, if you're looking for some fresh new graphics for your stream. Whether you're on Twitch, YouTube, or Facebook gaming, you'll find something that's a perfect fit for your channel. They offer full themed overlay packages, which are great if you're trying to give your stream a complete makeover. But let's say you're just looking to pick up some new alert graphics. Don't worry, because they've got you covered there too. You could find single graphics such as alerts, banners, panels, and logos as well. And one of the best parts about most of these overlays is that they are completely modular. So if you and your friends all pick up the same overlay, such as this Rodan one right here, you can change the colors and tweak it to match your brand and none of you will have the exact same overlay. If you guys are looking to take your stream to the next level, be sure to check out own.tv using my link below to support the channel. All right, guys, so let's begin. I'm going to drag OBS over from my other screen. If you are on your computer right now, please open up OBS. Here we go. Here's my OBS. You're going to see I have some docs here, custom docs. I have my Twitch activity feed where I can see my follows, um, bits, donations, all that kind of stuff. And then my Twitch chat over here on the right side. So real quick, though, before we jump into the settings, let's go over this UI. Up at the top, we have our standard taskbar. We have file, edit, view, scene collection, tools. Um, you're not, you don't really need to use any of these because everything in here um, you can do by shortcuts pretty much. So like I said, docs on the left, docs on the right. You probably won't have these when you first open it. These are custom docs that I added. And if you want to learn how to do those, I have tons of videos on that as well on the channel. So check them out. Um, in the middle here, this is your preview screen. This is what everyone on your stream or your recording is going to see. So right now I have a scene set up with my camera, my camera border, and it's just showing my display. So whatever I have on my display will be visible in this scene. Down here we have all of our scenes. Scenes are basically a collection of sources. Um, so you can make a bunch of different scenes and have different sources in those scenes. Here's your sources right here. So these are all the sources I have in this screen. As you can kind of see down here, this is my camera. I have it grouped into a folder called camera stuff. This is my border around my camera. This is my um, my Canon M200 that I'm using as a uh, webcam here. Uh, my alerts, uh, which are basically when someone follows, it pops up on the screen. Um, and then this is my display capture. And then this is game capture stuff. If I close that folder, you can't see all those games. All right. so. That is basically the left side of OBS. Right here we have our audio mixer. So I'm using a Go XLR, so everything is coming through one audio channel, which is called my broadcast mix. If you don't have a Go XLR in this audio mixer, you'll probably see your microphone, um, your desktop audio, stuff like that. That's completely normal. The only reason I have just one channel here is because everything is getting filtered through my Go XLR and into one channel called broadcast mix. I do all my mixing on the Go XLR processes it there and outputs it to this one channel, which I output to my stream or my recordings. Here's your scene transitions. You can set up some nice stinger transitions to go between different scenes and things like that, which are pretty cool. Not really uh, necessary in, in the initial setting up of OBS, so we'll kind of skip over that for now. Right here we have some controls. Start streaming. This is the start recording button. Right now it's a stop because I am recording. Uh, virtual camera, studio mode, if you want to set up some like uh, transitions and be able to see like I'll show you um, it'll basically split it um, and show you a preview before you switch to a transition and then right here we're gonna jump the settings 
gonna try and go through this as fast as possible to keep this video nice and short so you guys actually watch the entire thing and learn what you need to learn. So in the general tab here, by the way guys, if I skip over some settings, it's because you can just leave them as the default um, and you don't need to mess with them uh, right off the bat. So right here we have, whoops, I mean to do that. Okay, so right here we have the general tab. Only thing in here that's really important um, that you can mess with is the theme of OBS. I use dark mode because white OBS um, or, or any of the other colors to me kind of hurt my eyes. The dark mode is nice and simple and clean. Um, so I suggest using dark mode. If you've watched my other videos, you know how I feel about dark mode. Next tab over, we have stream. So this is where you're gonna set up your streaming settings. Um, this is where OBS learns where to output your stream to. If you're streaming to Twitch, you're gonna wanna hit Twitch right here. If you're doing YouTube, you're gonna wanna switch it to YouTube, Facebook Live, vice versa, all that stuff. So if we're going to Twitch, we're gonna keep it on Twitch, keep the server on auto, that'll automatically select the best server to upload your stream to uh, with the lowest ping to get the best quality out of your stream. Okay, that's all we really need to know here. Next tab, the output tab. So in the output tab, we have a couple of other tabs. We have streaming, recording, audio, and replay buffer. We're gonna ignore replay buffer right now. Um, let's focus on streaming. So right off the bat, if you have an NVIDIA GPU in your computer or graphics card, you're gonna wanna use the NVIDIA NVENC H.264 new encoder. That is the best encoder you can use if you have an NVIDIA GPU. If you don't, you're gonna wanna use X264. So, NVIDIA's encoder is basically using your graphics card to encode your video. This uh, results in better frame rates in your games, less lag, um, and it's way less taxing on your machine. However, if you don't have an NVIDIA GPU, just use the X264 encoder, which uses your CPU to encode your stream. So hopefully you have a nice beefy processor to go along with that. Um, you're gonna to want to keep this on CBR for your rate control, your bit rate. If you're streaming in 1080p at 60 FPS, uh, I would suggest a bit rate of around 6K. You can try and bump it to 6,500. Um, this is where an internet speed test is gonna come in handy. I would go to fast.com um, and test the speed of your internet. If you have at least 25 upload speed, you should be fine with this. Um, if it's a little lower than that, you might want to drop your stream down to 30 FPS or even down to like um, 720 uh, at 60 FPS and stuff like that and lower your bit rate accordingly. If you're doing 720 at 60 FPS, you can drop it down to like 4500 or even 4K. Um, keyframe interval right here, you're going to want to put this on two. Um, that'll just improve the quality of your stream slightly and it's not really taxing on your machine at all. Preset. You're going to have these presets if you're using the NVIDIA encoder. I use max quality. I'm running a 2070 Super in this machine. Not the best GPU on the market, but it's not bad either and it handles this perfectly fine. Profile, keep it on high. Make sure look ahead and cycle visual tuning are checked. GPU, set that to zero. Max B frames, set it to two. Okay, audio. So in the audio tab, this is where you can see all your audio devices, your desktop audio, your microphones, all that good stuff. So. Like I said before, I'm using a GoXLR, so all my audio goes through my GoXLR, and I just have to worry about one audio channel, which you guys can see here, which is the stream mix. If you don't have a GoXLR, you're gonna wanna set your desktop audio to your default, which is your system's audio, and then make sure your microphone is selected here. That should cover that, and there should be no problems there going forward. That's all you need to worry about in the audio tab. Video tab. All right, so this is going to be where you set the resolution of your stream. Your base canvas resolution is gonna be what you're using, what you're playing games at, what your, your display in front of you is. So I'm using a 240 hertz display at 1080p. My base canvas resolution is 1080p. Output scaled resolution is what your stream is going to be. I stream in 1080 at 60 FPS, um, but if you're gonna stream in, let's say 1280 by 720 or 960, um, output scaled resolution is where you would change that. You would change this to 1280 by 720 and then that means you'd be playing games in 1080 and streaming in 720. Downscale filter, you want to use Lanxos. Um, that is the best quality filter on here. And to be honest, dropping down to the other filters doesn't really improve your system's performance that much. If you have a little bit of lagging, maybe you can drop it down to the middle option, but Lanxos is normally fine. 
common FPS values, this is the FPS of your stream. If you're streaming in 60 FPS, have it set to 60. If you wanna do 30 FPS, set that to 30. And right here we have hotkeys. Here are where you can set up some custom hotkeys on your keyboard to do things within OBS. Like I have my number pad button here. Um, I used to have that set to start and stop recording. Um, I use an Elgato Stream Deck now, uh, so it's a little bit better for me. I use that as basically all my hotkeys, but if you don't have a Stream Deck, you can basically set hotkeys for every single scene and any function within OBS on your keyboard right here in the hotkeys tab. Definitely useful. Hotkeys are extremely important and it helps your stream be more live and uh, entertaining. In the advanced tab, uh, process priority. This is how your system pro um, this is how your system uses OBS. Uh, it's going to generalize and take resources from the system and direct them towards OBS to give you a little bit better quality um, for your stream or your recordings. If you if you seem like your your OBS is lagging or maybe your recordings are lagging a little bit, you can jump the process priority here up to high. Um, but other than that, you might want to keep it on normal. Right now, I have it on high when I'm recording because I'm not doing anything else. Keep in mind that the higher you set the process priority, um, it's going to take resources away from whatever else you're doing on your computer. So while you're gaming, I wouldn't really suggest it unless you need to, but you can mess around with that and see how it impacts your system. Um, you can have it set to automatically reconnect if you disconnect from the internet. It'll keep uh, retrying to reconnect instead of shutting your stream completely down. You can add an extra stream delay here so you can avoid stream snipers and things like that. Um, and that's really it in the advanced tab. So that's it guys. That, that, that's how you set up OBS. It's very simple. Drop any comments down below if you guys need any more help. Um, but that's really the basics of setting up OBS. And if you guys need any extra information, how to set up alerts and all that kind of stuff, I have tons of videos already on the channel that you should check out. Um, I'll link some here in this video in the cards. But anyways, guys, I hope that helped you. I really do. I still, to this day, I'm getting a lot of questions and I feel you. I feel your pain, guys. Like I want to help. I really want to help you guys get this stuff set up. So drop any comments that you have down below um, and I'll try and answer all your questions as best as I possibly can. And if you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing to the channel and turning on those post notifications. I have a lot of videos on this channel talking about streaming tips, OBS. Uh, my main focus has always been OBS. I love the program and I've learned a lot about it and how to tweak it to work with like every kind of system. So feel free to drop some questions down below. But anyways, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something and I hope that I helped you. I want you to keep those hammers up and I'll see you next time.